XP item sets in data mining phase 3, new supply turn-ins, sunken temple raid loot, new item appearances, blood moon pvp rewards, okay, talent calculator, phase 3, dark moon fair trinkets, okay, dude what the f let, let, let's start from scratch here, shall we? I'm just gonna open all of them, and we'll take, gonna take a look at them in like the order of which we open them. This is a lot of data mining though in one place, so this is gonna take some time. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of stuff, man. So we opened up Sunken Temple, new item appearances. I mean, we're gonna have to take a look at that as well. Blood Moon PvP rewards, and Phase 3 Dark Moon Fair Trinkets. Brand new profession items, and lastly, Data mine runes and class changes. Oh my days. This is like what 11 articles on data mining. And we're, we're going in blind by the way. 100% going in blind. Nobody knows anything. So, nightmare incursions. With data mined items related to nightmare incursions, the newest PvE event coming to SOD in phase 3. While we can't confirm if all of these items will be available or exactly how to get them, several of them were preview previewed in Blizzard's official Phase 3 reveal. Let's go down then. Nightmare Focus Staff? 30 Stamina, 26 Intellect, and 29 Damage and Healing. Yeah, so we're just gonna stop raiding Normer from now and just get this instead. Like, I, I'm just calling it now, we're doing no more raids. No no more raids in phase 2. It It's fine. Emerald Ring? Enter it the dream of a targeted friend. Um... Okay. Um... Already been there, already doing that. Armor of the Emerald Slumbery. When struck by a melee attacker, that attacker has a 5% chance of being put to sleep. I guess that makes sense. It's focused on nightmare and sleeping anyway apparently, so that makes sense. Roar of the Dream, 14 stamina and harmful spells have a chance to increase spell damage by 66 for 10 seconds. This one really reminds me of the ring you get from... Oh, what are they called again? The Emerald Circle or the Emerald something? Yeah, they're called something. Who's trying to trade me? Hit me up, bro. What are you trying to do, man? Oh. Merithra's in her inheritance. Okay. Some stamina, once again, puts the enemy target to sleep for up to 30 seconds. Roar of the Guardian, 10 stamina. Trinket as well. Increases your... Increases your melee and ranged attack power by 70 for 20 seconds on a 5 minute cooldown. For parsing, that is incredible. Especially if you have ki quick kill times. If you have a 30 second kill time, that is like what, 80% uptime or 66% uptime on this trinket. That is a lot of attack power by the way. Holy smokes. Then you have Roar of the Grove giving you, wait what? 10 stamina invoke the power of the dream lasting for 15 seconds while standing in that circle the caster gains 120 healing power that is actually kind of huge man seed of renewal a chance to embed a seed into enemy humanoids beast or dragonkins hit by abilities or spells and if the creature is slain then the seed will grow into its corpse okay but like Huh? And so a healing blossom will grow from the corpse. So I'm guessing either you click on that healing blossom or you walk onto it and you get healed. I mean for mage AOE farming that could actually be quite massive. I can see some use cases here. I can actually see some substantial use cases here for uptime in AOE farming. Anguish of the Dream as well, right here, increases the damage or healing of your mech next attack, ability or spell by 40 when you kill a target that gives experience or honor. 
restores health and mana when you kill a target that gives experience or honor as well. Like, holy. These two and this thing in Nightmare Siphon is requires level 20. So you can probably get this one really early by doing incursions while leveling. This one as well, level 30. Then we have Emerald Dream Plate. Okay, I mean 1% crush chance to crit, 1% chance to hit, 1% crit. And the boots as well, boots and hands. It's a 6 set bonus. 1% chance to crit. So I mean the warriors here will get 3% chance to crit and 1% chance to hit. Well, 4 actually. 4% critical strike from that set bonus. Let, let's go down to like, there's a bunch of different set bonuses here, set items. I'm not going to take a look at all of them. But we have like plate here as well and giving healing done by spells. Obviously for paladins here, right? We have emerald scale mail, so attack power and also intellect and the critical strike once again. So hunter items and also shaman items. So hunters and shamans right there in one place. We also can go all the way down to, uh, here we go, healing done and increases the speed of Ghost Wolf by 15%. Yeah, these ones as well, minor increase to running and swimming speed. Did the other boots have something like that too? They didn't. This is like specific to the male set. Let's take a look at the leather then. Here as well, increases speed of Ghost Wolf by 15%. Why does leather have a range attack power? That's kind of weird, man. It goes from having a range attack power to then having regular attack power to having dodge to having stealth levels. That, that has to be a typo. The range attack power. I don't know. Could be a typo. Could could be could be weird. And based on all the boots that I'm seeing, it's only the male boots that give you something specific. Now for mages, we have, uh, this actually looks quite strong, 1% chance to crit, a bunch of spell power as well from the set bonus. Now no spell power from the, the headpiece though, I just clicked on an item I should have clicked on. You have to scroll all the way down again, oh my days, are you kidding me? Uh, there we go. Lots of chance to crit, 1% chance to crit on the headpiece, lots of spell power. This actually looks very strong. I'm not gonna lie, this looks really strong, man. Also, one of the male set headpieces is listed as plate. Okay, so there are some typos here then, probably. Some typos or something being wrong in the data mining. Just a little bit. 1% chance to crit, so I mean this set piece is 2% critical strike, and a bunch of spell power. As a mage, that's pretty good. We also have similar for healing, but I mean, the healing says priest and mage. As a mage, most of your healing is done by casting spells anyway, so I don't really think you would go for this, as a mage. But at least we can. <laughs> we can go for it, you probably won't though, but I mean, we can. And that's the entire set, that, that's all the items from the incursions then, apparently. Um, we also have raid consumables and shoulder, shoulder enchants? Yo, okay. New raid consumes in phase 3. Atalai, Mojo of War. Use this one, increases your attack power by 48. Chance on melee attack to grow in size, increasing strength by 35 for 10 seconds. Holy smokes. <laughs> Holy smokes. Atal Eye, Mojo Forbidden Magic, 40 spell damage, and successful spell hits have a chance to unleash a shadow bolt at the target. Now this one sounds not that good in comparison. The melee one sounds way better, but it really depends on how much a shadow bolt hits for. And the proc chance. It says 25% and has a 40 second cooldown though. Mojo of life, increasing healing done by 25, mana regen by 11 mana per 5, and your heals have a chance to restore 8 energy, 1 mana, or 4 rage. Okay. 
Atalai Signet of Might permanently adds 15 attack power to a shoulder slot item. You have one for spell damage, for 9 spell damage, and you have one for healing, for 18 healing. Pretty, pretty normal, but I mean, that's pretty cool though for phase 3, I'm not gonna lie. It, it's kind of like Sulgurub, but scaled down. <laughs> it, it's Sulgurub Light. That's what this is, Sulgurub Light, but I mean, that's really cool. I'm not gonna lie, and Atalai as well. It makes sense. The melee one looks absolutely ridiculous though. This, this is crazy. New PvP item sets? Okay, I'm not really that interested in the PvP item sets though, but basically, it looks like it's scaled down level 60 set items, right? The Hunter is a Bloodguard set item, level 50. Knight Armor, Sergeant Knight Armor. We already looked at this when we looked at the preview video, right? Most of these things. They do give a lot of stamina. It's way less emphasis on attack power, way more emphasis on stamina and survival, which I think is good. There should be a difference in PvE sets and PvP sets, I think, personally. Now this is the juicy one for me personally though, for gold making, new supply turn-ins and uh, in data mining for Season of Discovery, Phase 3. Okay. Now, I've already taken a look at some of this, by the way, spoiler warning. Another discovery in our continued data mining of Phase 3 are several new spells to replace supplies, seemingly an extension of the waylaid supply system in classic Season of Discovery. The spells all request some type of professional item to complete the shipment, seemingly similar to the waylaid supply shipment system, which are turned in to gain rep with the... Okay, we, we all know this. So take a look at what's uh, used here. We have Undermine Clam Chowder. Is that a new item, by the way? Or is that something that's always been there? Nightfin Soup, that one we can actually... You can fish Nightfin right now. Heavy Matry Bandage, Tender Wolf Steak. You can farm this right now or buy it right now. Sungrass, Dream Foil, True Silver Bar, Thorium Bars, Rugged Leather, Thick Hide, Enchanted Thorium Bar, Superior Mana Potions, Mana Healing, Major Healing Potions, High Explosive Bombs. Can't we make those now? I think we might be able to. Or maybe I'm thinking about the High Yield. Thorium Grenade, Thorium Rifle, Mithril Coif, Thorium Belt, True Silver Gauntlet, Rugged Armor Kits, Wicked Leather Bracers, Runic Leather Bracers, Black Mage Weave Headband, okay, Black Mage Weave. This one might be important by the way, Black Mage Weave, Rune Cloth Belt, and Tuxedo Shirt. Now here's the thing, they are only data mining the replace supplies here. I want to see if we can compare the, the stuff here. We can go to um, Season of Discovery, right, where's the items? Database, items. I want to see if we're able to see how many you need. So, Waylaid Supplies, Undermine Clam Chowder. Okay, so it's, it's still messed up over here as well. It says add seven fire oils, so we still don't know how many we need. If, what if I click on one of these? If I click on the waylaid supply? Okay, it still says add seven fire oil. <laughs> so uh, there, this one is messed up, okay? Are there anything more here that wasn't like on... Um... Yeah, no, it's all the same. Actually, there's one for rune cloth belt. I don't know if that one was here. Oh, it, it was, never mind. Yeah, so everything is here. And we don't know how many you need yet. Okay, well, I mean, at least we know more about what's needed. We just don't know the quantity. Sunken Temple Raid Loot. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some juicy stuff here, right? There has to be some absolutely juicy stuff here. Blistering Rage Hammer to begin with. 3.7 speed. 
47 DPS. One, two. Isn't this like a very high top end the, the damage? Am I crazy? Isn't this like really high top end? Increases damage done by 30 and attack speed by 10% for 15 seconds. That's also a chance on hit by the way. We have the bloodied head spike with 12 agility, 15 stamina and a 1% chance to crit and 1% chance to hit as well. The restorative rod giving 44 healing done, that is fucking crazy amounts though. Scalebane Great Axe, 204 top end with 3.3 speed, 93 attack power when fighting dragonkins. Ooh, what about this one though? The scale, the, the sight of the dream, 20 strength, 3.6 speed, 205 top end, 20 strength, 8 agility, 11 stamina, and 1% chance to hit. I think that is quite massive. You also have the, um, the, uh, the what is this one like again? The gun axe or whatever, the temple explorer's gun axe. 18 strength, 15 stamina, and has like a very fun on use effect. We have some epics that we haven't looked at. The ancient divining rod. This one's... Finally, we're gonna have ferals, bro. Finally, we're gonna have ferals. What is that? That is insane. Ancient Divining Rod. 30 strength, 18 agility, 12 stamina, and plus 78 attack power in cat, bear, and dire bear forms. Now, based on this attack speed, I can't see anyone else wanting this than ferals. Quote me if I'm wrong, though. I could be so wrong. You have no idea. I could be, I could be losing my mind. L but look at this, Chieftain's Bane, two-handed sword, 3.5 speed, 35 strength, increases chance to get a critical strike with all spells, and attacks by 1%. But also look at this, Tail of Aranicus, 3.4 speed, 264 top end damage, increased two-handed swords, plus 8, and 42 strength. 64 DPS. Isn't this like... What is the name of a weapon from Molten Core? What is it like Onyx? Onyx Claymore or something? Or is that something else? Onyx Claymore. Ah, that's something way different. But like Molten Core. What if we take a look at Magma Dark's loot for example? Is it Claymore, maybe is the name? Let's take a look at Obsidian Edged Blade. There we go, that's a perfect one to compare it to. Obsidian Edged Blade, 3.4 speed, 42 strength, plus 8 swords. The Tale of Veronicus is literally the same. The exact same, 3.4, 176 to 264, 64.71. We're literally getting Molten Core loot at level 50. Unless, and this is a big unless, maybe they put this in just as like, as bait. Maybe this won't be from the raid. Maybe it's bait. And if so, well played Blizzard. But if not, we're getting literally Molten Core loot at level 50. How do we feel about that? I think that's crazy. And like this one, uh, the reason why I think it's bait is look at the differences. Chieftain's Bane is 52 DPS, this one is 64. That is a massive increase. The Tale of Veronicus is basically a legendary in phase 3. It's basically like getting a legendary, it's so much better. So to me that one really looks like a bait, but I mean... We don't really know until we know, do we? It's been data mined though, but they have also said that they're, that they're throwing fake things in to data mines. Just to kind of like put you off. <laughs> the Spire of Hakari Worship. 14 stamina, 14 intellect, 13 spirit, 19 spell damage. So you're losing a lot of spell damage here, but you're gaining 2% chance to crit. 
I don't know the exact conversion rate, by the way, between spell power and critical strike, but I... This one seems not that good. But then again, maybe 2% crit is so massive that I have no idea what I'm talking about, but like... The spell power makes this one seem underwhelming. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. We have some one-handed items as well, I'm just gonna go through these really fast. Reduces the threat you generate by 30%. On like an on use effect. Do we have any? We do have some one handed epics as well. We have Dragon's Cry, we've already seen that one in the preview. And we have Degraded Dire Nail. It's an epic dagger with uh, 1.7 speed, 7 stamina, and 1% chance to crit, and 40 DPS. For main hands, we have. Um, Madness of the Avatar increases damage and healing done by 15. Once again, this sounds really, really bad to me. This one though increases healing done by 24. Also, so also sounds bad to me, man. I don't know. Cobra Fang Claw. Okay, Cobra Fang Claw is a set of two. It's a fist weapon, 40 DPS, main hand. And when you get both, you have a 2 set bonus, grants a smaller chance when ranged or melee damage is dealt to infuse the wielder with a blessing of the serpent, ranged and melee attack power increased by 150 for 12 seconds, proc chance is 3% on a 2 minute cooldown. Mm, I mean, that sounds pretty good. Hubris the Bandit Brander increases damage and healing done by magical spells and effects by up to 20, so that's a main handed dagger. Isn't the Nomergan Nomer dagger literally already 19 spell damage? So you're telling us we go from 19 to 20? Yeah, you're literally. I, I'm just gonna. If I show you this. We're going from 19. The Glimmering Gizmo Blade, we're going from 19 spell damage to 20 spell damage. Feels underwhelming. I I'm not gonna lie, feels really underwhelming. Makes me not want to be a caster. <laughs> um, yeah. Unique main hand, okay, one handed, one handed mace with 35 healing. Then we have a Modas Carcoon, 23 fire spell damage. That's pretty good at least. At least that's good. Nightmare Trophy, once again, feels underwhelming because we literally have a wand in BFD, uh, not BFD, in Nomregan, also giving us 9 spell damage. And both these ones also gives the same. 9 healing or 9 spell damage. We literally already have that. We we already have it. Don't need it. We also have Dreadstalker's Hunting Bow. A ranged bow this time. 3.0 speed, 8 agility and 22 range attack power. Then we have some cloth armor. We have some different uh, yeah, some cloth armors and some set pieces, I think. Nightmare Prophet's Vestments and Belevolent... What the fuck did I just say? Benevolent Prophet's Vest. So healing and also on DPS. Don't know why they put... Okay, Priest. Classes Priest. Classes Warlock. Then we have the Mage and the Warlock one, so 1% chance to crit. And 23 damage and healing done. Isn't that once again literally what we already have from Nomari? Isn't that like the irradiated chest? Yeah, it is. Once again, if I pull this away, take a look at this. This is the chest, by the way. 1% chance to get a crit. And also 23 spell damage. That is what mages get. And if I take this away, we can take a look at the irradiated chest. And it's literally, once again, the exact same. Irradiated robes is 1% crit. And 23 spell damage. I don't know, man. Suddenly I don't want to be a caster main anymore, dude. Are casters just being memed on this entire phase? 
Like, it's, it, or Caster's just being memed on. I will say, suddenly we get this one, which is a really good off piece, by the way. Increases damage and healing done by 32. Now we're talking. Why not give that to set items? What is this? 1% and 23. Hey, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Let, let's see if the trend continues. Going to um, Warlock, Malevolent Prophet's Sandals. 1% chance to hit, and also 15 damage and healing done. Let's compare that to Normaragan loot as well. So Normaragan, we go to the Radiated right here. 1% chance to um, hit, and 11. So we're getting a 4 spell power increase. Yay! 4 spell power increase, wow. I am absolutely shook. That's going to be insane, right? Now these handstone, they're looking good. Damage and healing done by 19. Same thing for the head as well. Damage and healing done by 22. And Hakari Shroud. 29 damage done by fire spells. 55 healing done. <laughs> that is insane though. That is so much. Wow. Yeah, I mean, so some of the items are looking really good. It's only the set items for cloth. They were looking really bad, man. But the offset items, they're looking pretty good. Um, we haven't really seen any trinkets yet, have we? Maybe they're coming later down here. We have some epic shoulders. Now, they are they require leatherworking, so I'm guessing we're getting to the um, crafted stuff as well. Eventually. Chest items, plate, plate, plate. Okay, rings. Now, we have Band of the Wilds right here. This one gives you 6 stamina, 20 attack power, and 1% chance to hit. We have Epic Rings. Now, based on there being this many Epic Rings, I'm guessing that's what you get from killing the last boss, right? You're gonna get an item to hand in, which also gives the world buff, and then also gives the rings. That's my guessing. So Drake, Claw, Band of the Berserker, 13 stamina, 1% chance to hit, and 20 attack power. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, first of all it's a good ring, but it looks really bad when you literally put it side by side to a blue ring that drops from the raid, and they have the same stats. The only difference is the amount of stamina, which DPSers don't care about. And Based on there being this ring later down, it's very obvious that the, this one, the Berserker ring, caters to DPS. DPSs don't care about their stamina. Having an epic ring with the exact same stats as the rare ring? Mm, don't know about that one, man. Maybe I'm being very negative here, but I don't know about that one, dude. Having epics not feel like epics? is very anti-classic to me. Then we have Drake Claw Band of the Harbinger, 15 damage and 15 healing. Oh dude, Cat, you're going to be destroying my entire desk, bro. You're stretching and just throwing things off the desk. Leave my desk alone. We have, oh, we have a Stalker one. Range attack power, 1% chance to hit, and 33 range attack power. And then we have the tank one. Now for amulets, we're finally getting some, well I say finally, we literally had necklaces in uh, Normrigan from the quest hand in. So 18 attack power and 1% chance to crit. I mean the critical strike chance is still pretty good, but I think the Normrigan one is better, right? Unless I'm being crazy. The Jindos lost the locket, we have 9 stamina, 8 intellect and 12 damage for casters. For cloaks, we have... There's a couple of good cloaks there. Relics, don't really care about relics, but I mean, increases the damage of sh swipe and shred by 2%. Increases the block chance of holy shield by 2%. And flame shock grants 15 attack power, spell damage, and healing. Wow. Shamans are going to be insane next phase, bro. Now we have trinkets. Okay. Y yo? Yo, yo, yo? Why am I seeing so many epic trinkets, dude? 
Okay, so we have this one, increases your chance to hit with all spells and attacks by 1%, really good if you're missing hit chance. For Warlocks we have increases the damage of your next non-channeled affliction based damage over time spell by 100. Warlock only by the way. That's kind of insane. We have the Chain Essence of Heranicus, I'm guessing that's going to be from the Quest Reward. We have Atalai Blood Ceremony, the um, basically the Mafia game, I don't know how to say this, it's a death roll but literally. And then we have Atalai Blood Ritual Charm, increases your spell damage by up to 96 and your healing by up to 192 for 20 seconds. Every time you cast a spell the bonus is reduced by 8 damage or 16 healing. So that's like what, 13 casts? Give or take 13 casts? No, 12 casts. Yeah, 12 casts I think. That's pretty good though. We have the same one for tanking. I mean, now I'm kind of... Yeah, now I don't know. Is the item that also gives you the world buff going to be the ring or the necklace? And um, the ring or the trinket, because we also have trinkets now. For literally everyone. We have this one for tanking, giving you defense skill by 20 and the armor points. We have the caster one right here. Increases your melee and range damage by 20 for 20 seconds. And every time you hit a target, this one is reduced by 20, uh, reduced by 1 with a 2 minute cooldown. A lot of weird trinkets here, man. A lot of really weird and interesting trinkets. Okay. I mean, we have a couple more posts to go through. Let's take a look at them really fast. New item appearances. Is there anything to th uh, think about here? Anything to look at? It's basically things looking different and having a glow, right? Scale being great axe, kind of cool. The gun axe as well, pretty cool. Two-handed maces. I mean, I will say, the corrupted Smashbringer is looking really fucking cool. <laughs> this one alone makes me want to play a Torin Shaman. Just don't even ask me why, I just want to be a Torin Shaman and have this item. I might make that happen, by the way. Just for the ultimate roleplay. Yeah, that is insane to me. Okay, I mean, literally, Tale of Veronicus right now already has its own appearance, so that makes me think Tale of Veronicus is actually coming in Phase 3. And that is, once again, literal Molten Core loot. It has the exact same stats as the Obsidian Edged Blade. I just want to put that out there. And obviously, the appearance as well really resembles kind of the Obsidian Edge Blade. But it's like in tail format. Nightmare Focus Staff as well looks really cool. Increases damage and healing done by 29. Now, the, the Fire Mage Dagger, by the way, in this one. Also looks really cool. A lot of cool items coming this time around, man. A lot of really cool items. The spell books as well, looking absolutely incredible. Now, here you can see a level 50 druid only item. It's a Blood Moon item, though. Alright, we, we can take a look at the Blood Moon items as well. That's a perfect segment into Blood Moon. So, level 50 updated Blood Moon items. For Druids, you have this one right here, a trinket, increases healing done by spells. You have an offhand giving both damage and healing. And you have a brand new... You would never guess it, man. But it's literally the level 40 Feral Weapon upgraded to level 50. It's the same thing, adding storm strike damage to melee attacks. So anyone who did this event in phase 2, guess what? Have fun doing the same event again in phase 3 and getting the same item, but scaled up. Do you think warriors are going to pump next phase? Kind of torn between shaman or warrior for PvP next phase? I think warriors are going to be doing well, but I think shamans are going to be insane. So I would say shaman for both PvP and PvE. Shamans are looking juicy, very juicy. 
Yeah, once again right here as well, Guribashi Pit Fighter's Bone, the exact same one, but this time it gives you 75 strength instead of, what was it again in phase 2? 50 strength, right? So it's the same item, just scaled up. As a mage... <laughs> it's the exact same... It's the same loot from phase 1 or from phase 2, it just scaled up a little bit, man. Oh, I'm about to go insane. So first of all, I asked them to not... Like, I wanted to have a brand new event, by the way. I'm already over the Blood Moon. And then they give us Blood Moon 2.0 in Phase 3. And they don't even bother giving us new items. It's scaled up items. Okay, just scrolling down then. Scrolling down fast, because yeah, you can see. Same items, same items, same items. The Paladin item, it says requires Paladin slash Warrior. It's looking kind of cool, but at the same time, eh. Eclipse Sanguine Saber, it's the same item once again. Priest, same stuff. Rogue, basically same stuff, different names. Chance on hit though, increase run speed by 40%. That's kind of weird. <laughs> kind of weird, but kind of like cool for being a rogue, right? Corrupted Smashbringer though. I want to have that one just for the appearance. I'm gonna, I leveled up, I started leveling a Orc Shaman by the way. I'm gonna delete that guy now. Or like, I'm gonna start over on a, a Tauren Shaman. Just because I wanna have Corrupted Smashbringer on a Tauren. So phase 3 I might be leveling Taurens. I say Warlock, yeah the exact same stuff man. The rings are so boring. I was hoping for like weapons or something cool dude. Alright, I mean warriors are getting a shield this time instead of just a one-hander. So some classes are getting brand new rewards, some classes are just getting scaled up. Most of them are just being scaled up though. I don't know how to feel about that, I have to refresh this page apparently. Now data mind, dark moon, fair trinkets. Gladiator stands, yeah gladiator stands is absolutely poggy though. But dark moon cards and dark moon decks, dude like hello? Wild's deck, so we gold making boys. Dark Moon deck, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark Moon card overgrowth, chance on successful heals to restore eight energy, one percent mana, or four rage. Who cares? Dark Moon card decay, spells and attacks sometimes leech zero health from the target and apply a stack of decay. When decay reaches five stacks, the target takes zero damage. So I mean, they will obviously take damage, the zero is there as a placeholder, don't worry. Then we have Sandstorm, chance on spells and attacks to summon a st sandstorm that circles you, dealing nature damage to a target it passes through. Then we have Torment, gives the wearer a chance on attack and spells to torment their target, causing them to wander in suffering for 3 seconds. So I mean, we're just gonna have to find out what deals most damage here. The, the, the card that deals the most damage and sims the most will be selling for so much, it's gonna be ridiculous. This could be a good way to make some gold in phase 3. I, I can't wait, that's interesting, that's really interesting. And how will we be able to get these? Considering we don't have uh, we don't have inscription, there's no milling in Classic WoW. Well. That, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. New phase 3 professional items coming to Classic WoW. Well. Okay. So for alchemy, we have Flask of Relentless Dreams and Flask of Nightmarish Mojo. This requires something called Nightmare Seeds. Increases damage and healing done by... Well, damage done by spells by 30, healing done by 45. So we're getting a flask, basically for free, that is reusable. Oh yeah, I have alchemy, oh yeah. Increases range and melee attack power by 45. Enchanting, you have a brand new sigil once again. And you also get something called Scroll of Spatial Mending. Okay. Engineering, void powered invokers and vambraces. Okay. 7 stamina, 8 intellect, increases damage and healing done by 21. Equip, provides protection against certain types of physical... 
Physic attacks. Psychic attacks. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know what I was doing there. Channels the power of the void, granting immunity to fear. You have the same ones basically as well for strength. And you have the same ones for strength and agility, but leather. That's kind of cool though. That's kind of really cool. For blacksmithing, we have plate, plate, and plate. Giving you like... Oh, they're looking pretty good. Increases, so Shokudin as well. They're showing some love to Shokudins, man. I love that. Melee, attacks, and harmful spells have a chance to increase spell damage by up to 50. For plate, they have a chance to increase your attack speed by 5% and attack power by 50. Oh, oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Leatherworking, same thing basically for the shoulders, by the way. It's 5% attack speed and 550 attack power. And the same thing here. Well, for male, it only says attack power by 60. And for male, once again, healing power, healing power. And for leather, we have 10% casting speed. Tailoring Mantle of Insanity increases healing done by spells and effects by up to 20, and healing has a chance to increase your healing done by 50. You have one for tanking, increasing your spell damage by 30 and chance to dodge by 2%. Is there one only for casting as well? There is. So we have Fractured Mind Pauldrons, giving you 18 damage and spell, so yeah, 18, and 10% casting speed. That is honestly not bad. Yeah, yeah, holy. What about some of the data mined runes and class changes? I have to find out more about the Dark Moon cards though. Like the Dark Moon cards, that is really interesting to me. I have to find out more. Okay, Omen of Clarity, Imbus. Um, so there's a bunch of class changes. Do we have to scroll far down to find the runes, by the way? Or are they, like, in here somewhere? This is, like, a lot of information in one place, and it's, like, so much to read through. It hurts my head to read all of this. Spell power, bale firebolt. Yes, I would have to read this entire thing. I, I'm not gonna do that, man. I'm just gonna get a TLDR of all the random new runes, because this is, this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot, man, to go through when it comes to class changes and stuff, but that is massive. Let me go back to Wowhead one more time. I'm just gonna like go to the news section here, see if there's anything more, because they keep data mining things all the time, man. So the last one was one hour, eight minutes ago. Okay, so nothing brand new, but what about the Wilds deck? Is there anything more, any more information about this? Do we know about the herbs you need to have? Can we farm them now? Can I buy them now? It's created by Wilds deck. So you have to have Ace of Wilds and Regular Wilds. Created by Ace of Wilds. Okay, so I mean, we don't really know just yet, but what if I go through, for example, Season of Discovery here, and we can go to Database Items. So, I mean, Star Lotus, it says it's a conjured item, but it's trade goods. Star Silver Ore as well, conjured item, but it's trade goods. Dream Root, also a conjured item, but also trade goods. Fool's Gold Dust, also once again conjured, but trade goods. Trade goods, Moon Rot, Greater Moonstone. So my guess is that you would probably have to farm stuff either in the raid or in Nightmare Incursions, based on what I'm seeing here. Emerald Chip, used in a quest, quest item. Nightmare Incursions, Duskwood, this begins a quest, okay.
There is 906 brand new items, by the way, in the new build. Okay, that is crazy. Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. Are, are most of them Nightmare Incursions? No, I mean, we're already going through them. We're already, like, done with those now. We have a bunch of runes, 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 other worldly treasure. Okay. I'm hoping that's something you can get from Handins in the brand new raid. Sludge covered G7 core processor? No. Please tell me we don't have to go through a quest line like that again, man. Like the normal quest line, please don't. I didn't like that quest line at all, by the way. Quest item, once again, purple flower, okay. Dude, there's so many items though. <laughs> <laughs> this face is looking juicy. I, I'm gonna tell you that much. It is looking. What is this? Inert mantle of nightmares. You can faintly hear distant screaming when handling this object. Mantle of nightmares. It's a reagent as well. Okay, so that means this is probably what you have or need to have to make the shoulders. Wit professions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. So you would have to go through a quest chain and get those. A lot of armor here that we have already taken a look at. And waylaid supplies, which once again we've already taken a look at pretty much all of those, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Decharged void powered vambraces, quest item once again. Supply shipment. Nightmare seed. This one says it's a trade good, by the way, but it does not say conjured anymore. So it's a trade good, but not conjured. How do I get this one? Oh, and now we're talking, okay, brand new recipes as well, that we haven't seen before. I mean, to be fair, some of them we have seen, by the way, but I mean, we're getting some new stuff here. Some brand new schematics, some brand new recipes, so schematics, goblin, destruction helmet, mining helmet. Actually, these are things we already knew about. They were just taken away, like taken out of the game files, so they had to put, put them back, I guess, right? Scapula of the Fallen Avatar. Ah, right. This is probably the one you have to hand in then. And Corrupted Blood of Ranicus. So you have two quests you have to hand in. This item starts a quest, and this one also starts a quest. Gold Massacre Coins, so a Nightmare Siphon, right, Anguish of the Dream. Already taking a look at all of those. I was hoping to find out more about professions by going through all the items here, but so far, I haven't really had any luck. What is this? Jungle Durian. Okay, no stat bonus, okay. I thought they were gonna put something in to, like, combat. Wait, Emerald Warden's Chest. Wasn't that, like, a brand new... Dream Emerald from Quest. Yeah, so Emerald Warden's Chest is supposed to be a junk item that you can open. Maybe you get something good from this, though. Shadow Tooth Bag as well. Right click to open. Sturdy Lockbox. So they put in the Sturdy Lockbox once again, which to me signals that maybe they're working on a continuation of that questline. You remember, that is the one that gives you the sleeping bag and also the cookies for rested experience in phase 2. They might be working on a way to continue that questline. Manorok Orb. Princess Theraldra's Scepter, okay. So I mean, we're seeing some brand new items here. Well, not new, but they have been remade. Waste Wonder Cipher. This one, for example, the Theraldra's Scepter, now gives you way more stats and attack power in cat and bear form.
What is this? Bargain bush? <laughs> Don a bush for whatever reason you may have. <laughs> Empty supply crate. Huh? Empty supply crate. Use. Find a use for all those empty supply crates. Whenever I hear supply crates, that means waylaid supplies. So is this a trinket that can somehow use the ones you don't fill up? Oh, here we go. Hef handy career haversack, by the way. 18 slot backpack. I'm gonna say it right now, this is either going to be a reward that you get from completing the whole quest chain for the sleeping bag, or exalted with the waylid supply faction. Yeah, one or the other one. Ain't no way you're alive, of course I am, Cosmo. 100%. Wasn't the new phase a bit early? I personally don't think so. The thing is, phase 1 lasted 10 weeks and people said phase 1 lasted too long, and phase 2 has now been out for, well, phase 2 will have a lifespan of 8 weeks. So people said that 10 weeks was too long, but apparently 8 weeks is too short. I don't know what to say. To me it's perfect, it's uh, really good. But um, the, the 10 day notice might be bad though, I'll tell you that much. Because people that are trying to schedule time off work might not be able to do so now. Formula Scroll of Spatial Mending. This is the one we already take a, took a look at, right? Curious Cowl. Okay, we're getting more heirlooms, boys. Exalted heirlooms. So when you get to Exalted with the Waylaid Supply Faction, I think that's when you get the Empty Supply Crate, by the way. Exalted for this one. Exalted, you get the 18 slot bag. And Exalted, you finally get these heirlooms. So you can see this one, for example, 8 spell damage and 7 stamina. Initiative cap, 7 agility, 7 stamina. And this one, 7 strength, 7 stamina. So all of these are heirlooms that you will very likely get from doing the Waylaid Supply Faction all the way to Exalted. I hope there's more though. Some recipes, some profession recipes, some stuff. Geomancer's Cord. Okay. Wait. Supply Expediter? You sometimes find additional Waylaid Supplies from enemies. That is absolutely massive, man. Quarter of the Untamed, already took a look at. Already looked at basically all of these, right? Yeah. Fell cloth and fell leather requires level 10. Now this to me indicates that you might be able to buy some rewards from the Nightmare Incursions, while leveling, like fell cloth stuff, with random enchantments. I would be, I, I feel very confident saying that's how you get those. Pulsating eye, and then six more items. Oh no. You, you already know what this is, right? The vibrating eye, the baleful eye, the glowing eye. This is the, um, what are they called again? This is Dark Riders 2.0. But instead of killing Dark Riders, you this time kill something way different. Yeah, sometimes you, you just kill uh, something way different. But it's definitely Dark Riders 2.0. That is crazy. Dude, phase 3 is looking absolutely juicy though. I I'm still trying to figure out more about... So Star Lotus is an herb and conjured. Ephemeral and unstable. Star Silver, same thing, ephemeral and unstable. Dream Rot, same thing. Dream Root, same thing. Handy Courier Haversack and Supply Expediter. Now this one to me is really interesting. 
being able to find more Wailid supplies. Imagine being a mage AoE farming and having this one, and just making more gold while farming by finding more Wailid supplies. That could be absolutely insane. Oh my days. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm I'm shook. I'm, I'm just sitting here soaking in all the information, and I'm shook. Phase 3 got announced yesterday. We now have all of this, and it's coming out in 9 days. This, this is crazy. Yeah, dude, that shit's crazy, man. What the fuck? The cat woke up as well, man. I don't know what to say. That is so much information to take in in one time, and I'm still just wondering about all of the uh, fucking... Um, the Darkmoon Fair decks, man. I need to know more about the Darkmoon Fair decks.